What's going on, data nerds? The great reshuffling is upon us, which likely means it's about time you polish up that resume. In fact, as I prepared for this video, I realized I have not looked at my resume for about three years, and it's about time I re-examine it to update it. But I wanted to take a quick moment to look over the resume that got me a job at a fan company, especially after reading this comment on Tina Huang's video based on a similar topic, because this comment kind of might make some of you feel a little bit defeated. Like, you know, yeah, Tina has a great resume where she's worked at Goldman Sachs, you know, has a, a master's in computer science amongst other things. You know, she's gone to UPenn and clearly she has a pretty impressive pedigree, which can be a little bit disheartening if you're looking to get into some sort of fang company because it might feel like they only hire people from Harvard with CS master's degrees. Well, Let's demystify that a little bit by looking at my resume, which is far from that. Uh, I didn't go to Harvard. I went to UW, which is still a great school, but it's definitely not one of those one word colleges like Harvard, Columbia, Stanford, etc. I went to a state school, essentially, and not even the main state school. I went to the satellite campus in Bothell and I don't have a master's degree in computer science. Instead, I have a bachelor's degree in information systems from UW. So that begs the question, what did my resume look like when I applied for all of the various FANG companies that I did and eventually got offered several opportunities to interview at a few of these FANGs, again, without a crazy pedigree. So let's dig into this resume, shall we? All right, so first, the header. Uh, it has pretty standard information, name, my phone number, email, also a link to my LinkedIn. And I had a few sentences just to summarize what jobs I was kind of looking for. So I was really looking to focus on data engineering and creating end-to-end -end data solutions. So that's really what I wrote about here. You'll just see it's very quick, just a few sentences just on the work that I've done and kind of the work I'm hoping to do. Also, I clearly labeled kind of the job that I had currently and the job I was kind of looking for here with data engineer. I'm kind of calling this out because I do have a resume currently that someone has asked me to review and looking at it, they've got data engineer, data scientist, and data analyst all on it, which more than likely you're probably just applying for one of these positions at a time. So you should probably just include that title on the resume and not all three. It's fine to try to apply for all three, but I recommend just pick one and let that be the target focus of that resume, right? You should have a data analyst resume, a data scientist resume, and a data engineer resume if that's really what you're trying to do. But enough about that, let's dig into the actual meat and potatoes, which is my experience. And I actually had skills above this, but I'm going to talk about experience first because I think that's a little more pertinent. I think that's what really tends to stand out for most people or most people that are looking at your resume, not necessarily the skills that you have, but how you've applied those skills. And so just looking at the top, you'll see the company that I first worked at was called Healthentic. It's not Goldman Sachs. It's not some giant Fortune 500 company that everyone knows the name of. It's a small healthcare analytics company that had about six or seven people working working for it. But honestly, looking back at my experience, that's where I learned a ton about building products. And in fact, if you look at this resume, that's really what it focuses on. Yes, there's a section in here that talks about me migrating a data warehouse, which is something that all of us data engineers do. But you'll also notice that there's two distinct projects that I worked on that I've decided to highlight where I've really talked about how I helped develop these products. You'll notice that I focused on talking about how I designed the ETL and the data warehouse design, as well as kind of the impact that that might have had overall on uh, the people that were using these products. The focus of the section is for what I did on this product and what impact that had overall, because that's generally what people are looking for. You know, They're not so much interested in what the product did, but they're interested in what did you do to help execute and bring that product to life. And then overall, you can talk about the impact from there. But again, one of the big focuses is what did you do and what results did that have? And that's kind of what I try to focus on here. And you'll notice I focus on very technical things where I talk about designing and building and uh, developing things like ETLs, data warehousing, things that will obviously click in some sort of ATS for this guy knows data engineering and you know he's worth bringing in. Again, nothing crazy here. The company was relatively small. And although we had a large swath of healthcare claims data, we weren't some fancy financial institution or large tech startup that everyone knew the name of. And even the company after that, you will notice is called Acron Analytics, which is actually my friend and I's consulting company that we have done three or four clients uh, work with, which was honestly more focused around things like executive workshops and training people on how to use Arima modeling than really doing a lot of development, which is where a lot of my consulting has switched into, but it is definitely still there. And then from there, I have some uh, previous work about being a BI developer at Providence Healthcare and Services and doing some MIS grading for UW, where I actually got to be a grader for the information systems course that they have there. And so that was the general set of experiences that I had that I used to apply for uh, FANG companies. The one thing you will notice throughout the different experiences is I always tried to focus on a couple of things when I was writing out those like bullet points, which was, you know, using strong verbs, which I just 
just Googled strong verbs and found a PDF, which you can find, you know, right here. Here's a picture of it to include on your resume. And you can kind of just look through the engineering section to kind of inspire you. On top of that, I also focused heavily on making sure I layered in whatever technology stacks that I was working with, whether it was C Sharp, Python, ETLs, data warehousing, uh, etc. You want to make sure that those words are in there because that's what gets picked up by these ATSs. They look for these keywords to make sure that, hey, does this person fit the job description we're looking for? And then, of course, I tried to focus on as many numeric things as I could remember. You know, if something saved money, how much did it save? How big was a data warehouse? Uh, what was the efficiencies that I created? Things like that. You know, numbers are kind of important depending on who is looking at your resume, especially if you're going for somewhere like Amazon. That was something I learned is like they really expect to know uh, the exact output and the exact efficiencies it created, the amount of money it saved, like they want numbers. So just make sure that those are in there as well. Because that again, shows not just your technical skill, but it shows that you're concerned about business impact, which is really what companies should be more concerned about. Speaking of skills, let's look over the skills section of this resume where I really just listed out the different groupings of skills that I'd kind of developed over the years. So we've got things like languages and programming, web programming, which I kind of had separated because there are tons of little things in there, analytics and data, or more specifically database management. So as you can see, it's pretty broad. There's plenty of skills referenced here. You know, I'd worked with a lot of Java and C Sharp at that point, developing uh, ASP.NET sites. I also had done a little bit with R and Python for some data science work both consulting wise and at Providence Healthcare and Services. And at this point I had oddly learned and picked up PowerShell pretty heavily um, because one of the companies that I was working at really liked to use it for their data infrastructure. And jumping over more to the analytics and database management side, I'll notice that I kind of use data modeling and data warehousing and normalization twice. Really that's kind of the same thing, right? You've got data modeling and data normalization and data warehousing, which pretty much imply similar concepts, but you know, I had them both. This is also where I included things like the cloud and uh, other components, just because I really didn't know where else to shove them. Uh, this is the problem working in tech. We learn so many things and it's so hard to actually organize everything that we actually know. And for the most part, that wraps up most of my resume. I also obviously had my education section in there, which as you can see, is very small. Uh, it's only the information systems degree. That was the only section. There's my GPA. I wonder if I still need it in there. Here's the reality for, I think everyone who is concerned about things like pedigree. I personally felt like Companies like Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, DocuSign didn't really start to reach out to me until I was about two or three years uh, in my career. And I had had my resume out there for a while and I kind of kept sending in refreshed versions of that resume. And I think basically what eventually happened was once you kind of hit that two year mark, most of these companies want to test where you're at in terms of, are you kind of a junior engineer? Are you a mid-level engineer? Where do you fit? Can we work with you regardless of what school you came from? I think my first Amazon interview was about a year and a half two years into my overall career. So it took some time for me to even get noticed by a company like Amazon. And this will likely happen to you too. Maybe if you aren't at something that people would reference like as a feeder school like Harvard or Stanford, but it's not impossible. And honestly, looking back in terms of where I learned a ton and built a lot of my foundation, it was at that more small healthcare analytics startup company because we really focused on building products from start to finish. So I got to see the whole process. I got to play a major role in design, which for someone who only had about a year and a half, two years of experience is pretty amazing. Like that's pretty cool to have that opportunity. And I'm glad that I was given it. And it really, I think made me stand out in terms of when I actually started interviewing, not in terms of my resume, but when I was doing my interviews, there were moments that I literally could go back to queries that I had written that were specifically designed for a product that I wouldn't have had to probably write if I worked at a larger company where most of your queries might not have as product focused and metric focused concepts embedded inside them, which again, that's really what I think got me past like the SQL portions of that interview. It also likely helped me pass a lot of the data modeling and ETL uh, design sections, which again, I I might not have had these opportunities if I had worked at a larger company. So if you're out there worried about your pedigree, focus more on what you can control, like the work that you're doing, the opportunities that you're given, and really try to take the fullest advantage of those. And then hopefully one day the almighty ATS God can one day pull your resume out for a recruiter to look at and send over to a hiring manager. It might take some time, but please don't get discouraged. And if you've enjoyed this video, please take a quick moment to just smash that like button below. It means a ton to me. And if you have any questions about your data engineering or data science, career, feel free to leave them below. I would love to at least provide some guidance with what I know. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.